problem? Small gloves. They matched the suit perfectly, but it was the only size they had. I thought they would stretch. And they didn't? Not yet. Well, how long have you had them? Two years. Of course. Well, where are you off to first? Well, first I want to try on my wedding dress. I hope they've finally gotten it right. I hope so, too. And then? Oh, just a few last-minute details. Anything I can do to help? That's very sweet of you. I'm afraid not. The day before the wedding and you have nothing to do? Not a thing. Until 2.25 when I pick up Jim Howard at the airport. That's all? That's all. Hmm. Well, I've already ordered the buttonhole flowers, presents for the best man and the ushers. I remembered uh, cufflinks, tie clasps. No, I guess that's everything. And my gloves do fit. What's the matter? Where is everybody? <laughs> Tomorrow. I know that voice of doom. Come on, Charlie. You come to do you both a good turn. It's your last chance to halt this madness. Well, if it isn't the ghost of weddings past. <laughs> well, I've seen it all before. You're both making a terrible mistake. Do you really honestly think so? My dear, there's nothing like marriage to ruin a good friendship. <laughs> Charlie, just because you're not fit to Glenn, live with. I think there's still hope. I have a feeling that Senator Ames and my friend Margot... Does she have marriage on her mind? Does the sun come up in the morning? <laughs> then forget it. Well, I've warned you, I've done my part. This has been a public service announcement. <laughs> well, I guess the world uh, ends tomorrow. That's odd. I thought it was just beginning. out of little molehills. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, uh, this is where it should be. Calm, relax. There is nothing to be nervous about. I couldn't agree with you more. I remember when we were married, Mama and me, oh, there was such confusion, such a running around. Mama was just like a chicken with no head. <laughs> me? I was like you, a rock. <laughs> Thank you. Foolish woman. <laughs> Why? This is time to enjoy, be happy, relax, like we are. Du har stora munnen, men nånting kommer ut. I was just telling Glenn how it was at our wedding. All the women were chup, 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 chup. All the men... <laughs> <laughs> and did you also tell Glenn that you fainted in the back of the church before the ceremony? Well, I... Uh, it was very hot day. Sure. <laughs> Temperature was over 100 degrees. I'm, I'm sure it was. Well, that must be another announcement about the end of the world. <laughs> end of the world? Telegram from Morley? Oh, yes, thank you. There you are. Thank you. Somebody is sending telegram about the end of the world? The president? <laughs> Not exactly. My best man, Jim Howard, was coming in this afternoon. Instead of that, his appendix came out this morning. Then you haven't got a best man. Not at the moment. Him! <laughs> Mr. Holstrom, remember. Rah! <laughs> Yo. Rah. 
I'm terribly sorry about Jim Howard, but I'm glad he's all right. Oh, he's fine. We're the ones with the problem. There's no one else you would like to have? Oh, I'm sure there are many people I could ask, but the well, best man should be someone kind of special. Yeah. I have one thought. Someone close to home. That thought has occurred to me, too. Well, it is your best man and your decision. But if you're thinking what I'm thinking, I'd be delighted. Thank you, Katie. Come in. Hi, Dad. Steve. How's it going? Well, not so bad. Good. Hey, you got a nice haircut there. Well, I told him it was a special occasion. Oh, you wanted to see me? Yes, yes, I did. Steve, we have kind of a problem. You see, Jim Howard can't make it. His appendix came out this morning. Gee, that's tough. Well, how is he? Oh, Jim will be all right, but it leaves me in kind of a bind. I don't have a best man now. What are you going to do? Well, Katie and I have talked about it, thought about a replacement. Mm -hmm. Naturally, it should be someone very close to me. A friend. That's right. And, if possible, someone who's also very close to Katie. Well, you've both got lots of friends. Yes, but there's one person we agree who fills the bill better than anyone else. Yeah? Someone who is really very close to both of us. Steve? Will you do me the honor of being my best man? Me? You. I know it's a little out of the ordinary, but we think you're a little out of the ordinary, too. I'd be very proud if you'd stand up with me. You just got yourself a best man. <laughs> well, let's call it a draw. All right. It's getting late, and I expect tomorrow will be a busy day. A lot of hurrying and running. <laughs> Precisely. Well, by the way, did you ever finish with Mrs. Holstrom's hat? I think so. <laughs> but you never can be sure. <laughs> I'm very happy for you. I kind of thought you were. You're a very lucky man. Oh, Katie's all right if you like uh, bright, thoughtful, beautiful women. <laughs> oh, Mother, the idea of having the wedding here was just great. I know your father would have liked it. We were married in this house. It turned out pretty well. Yes, it certainly did. Good night. Good night, Mother. Then. Yes. Don't stay up too late. <laughs> and be sure and brush my teeth before I go to bed. Coming down to say goodnight. I was just coming up to say goodnight. I'll meet you halfway. The formula for a successful marriage. This is 
one of those moments that generally go unrecorded. What do you mean? This is the last time we'll be saying goodnight to each other in the hall. Yeah. This time tomorrow, you'll be Mrs. Glenn Morley. Yeah, this time tomorrow. Oh, Katie, I love you. Loads means a lot, Katie. A good half hour, anyway. Himmel, nonetheless. <laughs> Relax. Everything's going as smooth as silk. I do want to be on time. I want my married life to be as long as possible. I've been a maid of honor three times, and no one has ever been close to being ready this early. <laughs> now, what else do we have to do? I feel as if I'm forgetting something. Well, let's make sure you're not. Something old. Yeah. From my grandmother to mama to me. Yeah. Something new? Yeah. Margot bought it for me yesterday. Something borrowed? From you. And something blue? Oh, that did. I know I did not feel completely dressed. <laughs> hey. Well, there. That's it? All done. <clears throat> Except for one little thing. Yeah? You forgot to put on your wedding dress. <laughs> Margot, that's not fair. You can't expect a bride to remember everything. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you look great. And you don't look so bad yourself. Uh, <clears throat> I've never seen a man who looks more like the father of the bride. Huh? Does anyone know what time it is? 10.25. Oh, it is 10.26. <laughs> oh, Steve. Yeah, Dad. It's, uh, it's customary for the best man to take charge of the ring. <laughs> sure, yeah. Now remember, there is nothing to be nervous about. <laughs> oh. I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> Katie. Do not come in. It's against the rules. I know the protocol. Uh, we're going downstairs now, but I, I did want to tell you something. What is it? You look beautiful. How do you know? I know. You have never looked more handsome. How do you know? I know. Well, uh, see you around. Yeah, keep in touch. Well, it looks as though everyone's ready. Yeah, everyone except me. Ladies. So, so beautiful. Thank you, Mama. Lovely. Thank you. My dear, they're both right. Thank you. 
We'd better get out of harm's way. Shall we? Yeah. all set. Decided not to run away after all. No. Nope. What's the matter? Oh, I thought I lost the ring. <laughs> Sit down and relax. There's a, a little pocket in the vest just for that purpose. Water! Somebody get some water! Kate Bate, we should be all right. What's happening? What's wrong? I don't know. I can't say. Let me through, please. Please, let me through. Papa, Papa, are you all right? Yeah. There isn't anything to be nervous about. School? School. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here today in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable state instituted of God 
signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church, and therefore is not by any to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. I require and charge you both that if either of you know any impediment why you may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, you do now confess it. For you be well assured that if any persons are joined together otherwise than as God's word doth allow, their marriage is not lawful. If any man can show just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him speak now or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Glenn Morley, will you take Katerina Holstrom here present for your lawful wife to have and to hold from this day forward? Wilt thou love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, so long as you both shall live? I will. Katerina Holstrom, will you take Glenn Morley here present for your lawful husband to have and to hold from this day forward? Wilt thou love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and health for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, so long as you both shall live? I will. The ring, please. Place this on the bride's finger and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. And I pledge thee my fidelity. And I pledge thee my fidelity. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. I do not think we have any joy. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, there they are. Oh, they... How does it feel to be Mrs. Glenn Morley? As Papa says, it's nothing to be nervous about.